Hello everyone and welcome to this Lens Baby webinar in association with WEX. It's great to see everyone or at least imagine you're there anyway. Um, I'm Angela Nicholson and today I'm joined by a great friend of mine, Robert Pugh. Hi Rob, how are you? Hello, I'm uh, just figuring out how to unmute myself. There you go. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> it's like we planned it. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I had it all planned and then I forgot where all the buttons were, so <laughs> but I'm, I'm here now. Uh, it's good to be uh, back doing another webinar with you. Great, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to, to see you again. Now, um, would you like to introduce yourself firstly to uh, everybody that's here? Uh, basically, I'm a, a wedding and portraits uh, photographer. I, I tend to call myself an international wedding photographer because I, I cover the whole world for weddings. Uh, that's my uh, main sort of income. Um, I've been doing photography for I don't know how long now. I've, I've years and years. So uh, I was in the army for uh, for eight years as a sniper. Came out of the army and then went to, back into photography. So I studied photography before um, I went into the army. And um, thanks to my dad for pushing me to uh, uh, study that, I had a fallback plan when I came out. So I've been doing it ever since, uh, since I think the last 15 years we've been uh, listed as a, a limited company. So uh, we, we're going in the right direction. So it's all about having fun. I kind of don't run it as a business. Um, I run it as a hobby and I just have fun with it every day. So uh, <laughs> I hope that helps. <laughs> That's great. Um, so just to introduce myself, as I said, I'm Angela Nicholson and um, I am, I test uh, cameras and all sorts of photographic kit for a living generally. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the co-founders of uh, Camera Jabber and I'm also founder of She Clicks, which is a community for female photographers. Formerly, I was the technical editor at Amateur Photographer magazine and I also worked at Future Publishing where I was head of testing. So. I love gear, I love playing with gear, and uh, Lens Baby, um, they first launched a lens, I think, in 2004, and that's when I first got my hands on one, and this, I'm just going to take the lens cap off, not that it's going to make a massive amount of difference, so this is the very first Lens Baby, and obviously, because, there we go, put my hand in front of my face, then it won't focus on me, so you can see they were quite strange optics and this was actually made out of I think it was a bit of pipe out of a washing machine wasn't it Rob or was it yeah, a, yeah, a vacuum yeah. cleaner? Uh, I think it was a, a vacuum cleaner wasn't it and he, that's how he experimented with building the uh, the flex part of it. Yeah so it's, it's great fun and the idea is it's a bit like a a very affordable tilt shift lens that you you know you squish it and you bend it and it was really good fun to play with this one was actually for it's for a Canon um, SLR, and I remember I, I went on a um, to a, a trade show with amateur photographer actually, and I shot shot all the behind the scenes images using one of these. So everything was like you know there was lots of um, very limited depth of field, and it was just great fun to use and a really nice uh, lens to play with. So that's that's how they started, but today we're really concentrating on the Velvet Twenty Eight, which is a very different kind of lens isn't it Rob? Yeah and um, I would probably say out of the out of all of them the velvet is probably the one that I would use the most so um, as a wedding photographer so I, I, I do have the uh, 56 so there's the 56 um, that's the one that's kind of normally in my wedding bag yeah uh, and I use that but then obviously lately we've got the the 28 um, absolutely love that focal length I mean as a wedding photographer uh, I'm probably a, a, a little bit different than others because most wedding photographers shoot around about the 35 millimeter for their their standard lens and I shoot with a 28 millimeter that's my standard lens so if it isn't with the velvet I've um, I've just normally got uh, a 28 uh, order focus lens on and that's what I use for the, the whole day covering it but then when it comes to certain shots and especially uh, bride and groom portraits where I can slow down a little bit and I can concentrate on the shot then that's where I'm going to get the lens baby out and I'm going to use that 28 uh, millimeter so I can get that lovely sort of soft look as well. Um, and I think it's one of those lenses where you really start to appreciate because it does make you slow down. You're not going to be 
bringing out your camera, snapping a shot, and then off you, off you go. You sort of need to yeah. just slow down, uh, concentrate on what you're doing, frame it up nice, and then just spend the time uh, getting your focus. And there is a little bit of a knack to the focus, and we'll, we'll get on to that um, as well um, shortly. Okay. So, I mean, I... You're, you're, as you say, a professional uh, wedding and portrait photographer and you shoot all sorts of stuff, but I test cameras for a living. And obviously my first um, interaction with Lens Baby was as testing the lens. But actually, I really enjoy using them because, as you say, you really kind of have to focus on what you're doing. You have to concentrate. And we, we hear a lot about mindfulness at the moment. And I really find Lens Baby lenses are quite mindful if that if that makes sense because you kind of forget all the technicalities and once you know what you're doing with them you can forget everything and you just concentrate on getting the nice uh results some really interesting images so um we thought that before we really kind of get going with the demo and everything we'd share a few images right so as you can see uh this is a local church and i'm pretty sure i shot this uh, wide open or close to wide open with the Lens Baby Velvet 28. And as you can see, it's created a very kind of soft, ethereal image. But if you look at it, you can see actually that that grey stone near the foreground is quite, it's out of focus, whereas actually the towards the church is more in focus. That's the sharper area, but you've got this kind of soft look as well. And that's because I've shot with it wide open, which gets us the maximum um, impact or effect, I should say. Um, this is, I would guess this was probably shot at something like F4, uh, maybe 5.6, but probably F4. And you can see that, you know, the, the tree um, trunk on the left is actually quite sharp, but all of the, the background, which is sort of naturally shot, soft because of the shallow depth of field, has got a real nice um, blur. And it's kind of, I don't know, you sort of like a, a, a fairy um, dell or something like that, isn't it? It's quite uh, yeah. just a nice kind of, image and it kind of I want to step down that pathway uh, just some close-ups because you can get quite close uh, macro images with the velvet 28 so this one again I've shot it quite wide open to show the maximum effect but you can still see there's some sharpness there so you can create some quite interesting results and if you've got a messy background you can get rid of it which is quite handy uh, these two benches are at the top of um, an escarpment near where I live and there's a beautiful um, vista beyond but it was a bit of a hazy day so I thought we'll go with the flow and I'll put the Velvet 28 on and you just get a nice kind of, um, sort of magical quality. And I've, I've turned the saturation down on there, that's not in camera, I've just reduced the saturation a bit. And then finally another image, uh, a local forest and again I think this is probably um, close to wide open. Uh, maybe 2.8, something like that, um, just to get that kind of soft, um, ethereal look again. So there's just a few images that I've shot in the Velvet 28, and I've just, you know, really been enjoying uh, playing with it, really. So, Rob, are you ready to share a few images? Over to me, yeah. So uh, let's just um, share my screen. So we are, um, we're going to look at... A couple of different images but to start with everyone talks about lens baby for um doing like wildlife or, or landscapes or um you know flowers or macro photography but used in the right way the, the lenses are absolutely beautiful for um portraits now this is literally out of the camera so all it was done is turned to black and white there's nothing else done to it uh, no sharpening, no nothing. It's just pure out of the camera, turns black and white. And it's not, it hasn't been through uh, Lightroom or Capture One or anything. It was just a very simple shot in the garden of my wife. And then I just Wi fi it from the, the camera to my phone. And then in Apple's own software, just turned it to black and white. So when it comes to my personal photos, what I'm going to call my snaps, my everyday snaps. I don't want to spend hours on them. I just want to get a beautiful shot, uh, appreciate it, and then move on. And with the velvet, because you've got that 28 millimeter, it, it sort of brings all the atmosphere um, into the subject. And then you're, you're concentrating on the subject. She's lovely and sharp. And you've got still got this kind of, I don't know, like this sort of 
I call it bocalicious on normal lenses, but this is just a, a nice creamy background, sort of smoothed out. There's no roughness um, to the edge at all. Um, and that's what I look for in a, in a lens when I'm picking a lens. I don't just go out and go, oh, you know, I'm going to buy a 28 millimeter and that's the cheapest one. So, so that'll do. I don't know if everyone's aware of this, but you can go and buy, say, 10 28 millimeter lenses, all in different price ranges um, and uh, all from different manufacturers. When you put them on your camera, you can put the settings the exact same on your camera and the lens. Say so you shoot at f4 for every picture and you take that um, a series of pictures with each lens. When you come to look at them, every single picture from each individual lens will have its own unique look. Uh, and this especially goes to manufacturers that put coatings on the lens because that coating that they put on the lens actually affects your white balance as well. So you will notice from lens to lens that the white balance, like one lens is uh, warmer than the other lens might be a bit cooler. It all just depends on the nano coats they use or if they don't use coatings or anything like that. Plus it's the aperture blades, how many aperture blades has it got in? Um, that'll affect sort of the, the creaminess, the bokeh that we're getting in the background. Um, so all of those things take to account and that's why I, I kind of love the lens baby lineup because they are they're a simple and easy to use lens if you know how to use it like I say it's not a lens you're just going to throw on your your camera snap away and move on and we are going to talk about how to set your uh, camera up and little tips on uh, what will help you Obviously, I shoot with Sony, so I'll just speak in generic terms when it comes to settings so you can uh, all have a look. So I'm going to close this down. I'm just going to open up Capture One, and then uh, we can look at a, a series of pictures that I've took, the same picture of uh, a cactus. But what I've done is I've adjusted the aperture as we go along, and it's going to show you the different strengths that, um, that it does when you open the ap aperture up. So if you have the, the aperture wide open, the, the effect's going to be the strongest. So each, um, each lens baby lens has its own unique effect. And um, the more that you open up the aperture, the stronger the effect is. So if you don't want the effect, you're kind of going to be shooting around about f8 um, around that mark. And that's going to basically give you a normal 28 millimeter. Uh, anything below f8 and you're going to see that uh, effect coming in if you're shooting it wide open you will look at an image and you'll probably think that's out of focus it's not even sharp but when you zoom into it you'll you'll notice that the subject is actually sharp but you have this um this sort of really fairy tale look to it it's like so a sheen isn't it it is, yeah, yeah, and and that's what I would say. the The velvet is um, is beautiful for that fairy tale look. So, whether you're in a meadows and you want to take pictures of the flowers or the bluebells or anything like that, and give that lovely fairy tale look, it's it's perfect for that. But for wedding photographers, uh, so I shoot this between f four and five six. That's kind of where I live with this lens, and that means that my subject is going to be a, a nice clear subject, just like this one. So. Uh, this was shot at, uh, just look at my notes, this was shot at 5.6, uh, so my subject uh, is nice and sharp and uh, crisp, but then you can see sort of down on the left hand side, if you look at the, the sort of the, the bush on the left hand side, look how it's um, got a haze to the, the leaves that are sticking out. So uh, that's what this does, it gives this lovely sort of polished haze to uh, everything behind it. Um, and for wedding shots, it is a beautiful lens to uh, show. Now, unfortunately, I haven't got um, wedding shots to show you because of obviously <laughs> the time of year and what's happened. Um, and um, so we've uh, we've had to bring the garden into uh, to all these shots. So let me just close this down. Let's. You can be as creative as you want with. Um, with the lens so don't you've got to think of it as an artistic approach okay 
um, think of it as though that you're painting something and you want to create something. It's, that's kind of what these lenses are for. They're, it's all about trial and error. It's about creating something different than anything else. It's taking your camera to that next level. So instead of taking the standard pictures that everyone takes, you're taking your camera and yourself to that next level of being creative. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the word we'll have for today, creativity. So yeah, so I've, I've got um, this up. This is a top view of a cactus, believe it or not. So um, and this was shot at F4. So this is kind of the dreaminess. And you can see in the center, you can see how we can see all the detail um, swirling around the center of the, the cactus leaves there. And you'll, you'll understand what it is when I actually come to the next image. Um, these are all the, the spines of it and the green underneath is the cactus itself, but uh, the center is the, the hair, uh, the centerpiece of the cactus. Now, for me, I just, I love looking at something like that because your mind starts um, separating the, the parts and trying to dissect it, what it is. Uh, so I, I love creating images like that. Yeah, very, very interesting about the, uh, the software as well. So, I'm going to go to um, the next image, so bear with me a moment. I'm going to start off on this one. So this is F22. Um, at F22, everything's uh, pretty sharp. I, I mean, I wouldn't say amazingly, um, you know, from far to near, because if you look at this building here, you can still see there's a slight effect on the building now. There's a, a very subtle um, haze to the building and this tree coming along. But that's the F22 and it's uh, it's widest open. And you've got the subject is quite close to you there, though, isn't it? So yeah. So we're just seeing natural drop off with depth of field, really. That, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, obviously it's a 28 millimeter, and um, that is. It's the uh, it's a, it's about a, a foot uh, away, so the camera is about a foot right. away. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, so it may not look like I've changed it, so I'm going to go back. So that one is f22. That one is f16. Okay, so again, there's a slight change in the background. You see it more on the bush on the right hand side as I'm clicking. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. You do. Uh, then we're going to go to F11, and then you can really see that uh, change from F16 to F11. You're better to keep your eye on that bush at the back at this stage, because at F11, your subject in the, the middle is going to be sharp, but then you can see that background is starting to smooth out, and it's a different kind of bokeh to a normal, uh, a normal lens. So... Then we go to F8, so we've gone from F11 to F8, and you can really start to see the separation start to pull in now, because the, the building, if you look at the window up at the left-hand side, that's starting to, um, to separate out. And then let's go to 5.6. Now, I'm going to uh, hold it at 5.6. So at 5.6, this is where I would normally use the lens, especially as being a wedding photographer um, and uh, approaching couples as well, because I, you've got to think of it differently uh, to a lens that maybe you used to, and maybe you, you've got a 28 millimeter and it goes down to F2, and normally you shoot a couple and you'll shoot that couple at say 3.2, because you know they'll be sharp and all the background will be blurry out. Well, you definitely have to uh, think a little bit different with this lens because the way it, it interacts with the separation on the back and the bokeh coming in and also the effect of the actual lens. So there's three different um, things to take into account there, okay? Uh, we've got really nice separation. The, you can see the background, but it's really smooth. I'm just gonna uh, give it a little zoom in so you can see lovely and sharp. Mm. But if you go into the background, you can see here how smooth all this is. I mean, we can still uh, still see detail in the middle of all these branches. 
even the fence, but it's so smooth um, how it comes across, especially when you're looking at these leaves being separated and how smooth it's coming across. But then look at the subject here, look how sharp that is all coming around. So loads of detail in there. I think that, that's an interesting point just to pull in actually, that when you zoom in, you can see it's a completely natural transition yeah. from sharp yeah. to smooth, isn't it? And imagine yeah. if you tried to achieve that in software, you'd never do it, you'd yeah. be there forever. No, and, and it's a different look too. It's not just a blur, is it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is what I'm sort of trying to get across because normally, normally, if you're using um, a lens for separation and you you're shooting at say 3.2, well, because of the aperture rings, you'll you'll get these bokeh balls, you know, coming around. When you zoom in and look, if you go in really close, you'll see all like bokeh balls from uh, what's created with. The, um, the lens itself but this doesn't do that this has got some beautiful fall off it just goes I mean you can see how sharp it is there and then it just goes straight to smooth and all the background where it is even this bush when we zoom in how smooth it is there's no roughness uh, to it so and that is the look from the velvet lens that's what it's designed to do to give this beautiful smooth sort of soft look to your uh, your image so so that's at five, six. And I mean, from, from there, you really do start to get creative and you need to figure out what sort of look you want out of, um, out of your image. So if I was to go to the next one, so now we're at F4 and there is a big jump from five, six to F4. Now the stages I've gone as well, that is the clicks on the aperture ring. So there's half clicks in the middle so when you look at the, uh, the aperture ring here, you have your clicks going round and they are listed as uh, 22, 16, 11, 8, 5, 6, F4, 2.8, 2.5. And then I'm gonna to get to the last one because it's an unknown um, aperture, but I'll explain that. Um, but there is half stops in the middle. You, they're, they're clickable, so that's what it clicks into, but then you can uh, go midway between uh, the apertures, if you like. So I'm just showing you the actual clickable um, apertures. So that's five, six, and then we go to F4, and we can definitely see um, a big change there from when it's at five, six, and especially when we look at this area now. So I'm gonna zoom in. Now we start to get this like haze look. Let me go on to the top here. Now we start to get this haze look come to it, this, this beautiful fairy tale look coming over, um, how it's, it's really sharp around here, and then it gets to the top, and even though all this is sharp, but the effects sort of starting to pull down into the subject now, and we get this lovely fall off. Um, and you can see, if we go into here, you see how all the sharp, Pines have got this lovely kind of fall off to them and haze to them. So I, I love that look. And that's why when it comes to uh, couples, I'm always shooting an F4, a 5.6, because it gives that uh, beautiful look. If it's just a bride on her own, I'll be at F4 because I know I can keep her lovely and sharp. And then it, the fall off is beautiful. And it goes lovely and smooth. If it's a bride and groom, I'm at 5.6 because I know I can keep both of them sharp. Um, it's definitely better to shoot this with foliage in the background. That's a posh word, foliage. So, <laughs> uh, so if you've got nice um, bushes with like flowers and colors that are all in the background and the bride and groom are there and then uh, when you shoot, all of these colors sort of um, kind of flare out as well. So it's beautiful to, uh, to shoot with really nice foliage in the background. Okay, so we're at F4. Uh, let's take it to 2.8 now, and we'll, we'll see a strong effect come in. Um, so now you can kind of see the glow to it. Um, again, the camera's not moved. The focus has stayed exactly the same all the way through. Now, this is still in focus. This is where a lot of people go wrong. So I've, I've done workshops for Lens Baby um, in London before where people have put the lens on and they've just, they've treated it like their normal lens and they've been, oh, it goes to 2.5. So let's go straight to 2.5. And they've been shooting images 
And we all know, looking on the back of a camera, the screen's really, uh, they're really small. Um, it, it's, it's hard to judge if your focus is right. And then they get home, they look at the images and like, oh, they're all blurry, um, they're all out of focus. But in fact, they actually wasn't, it was just using the strong effect. I mean, if you, if you was to zoom into this, well, you can see there that, you know, that is actually all sharp, but it's got the effect now is totally across the image. Um, obviously, it's stronger on the outside because we, we can see here now, we can see how it's got this lovely glow to all the bush, but we can actually still see, you know, all the leaves, all the separation in the background, all the detail is still there. So even if we go to this door there, all the locks still there, all the, um, the door, so everything is all sharp. It's just now this effect is really drawn in. So the next one is 2.5. Um, everyone thinks this is the, where the lens ends, but it doesn't. So that's 2.5. So you can see there, it's still sharp. We still get everything, but the effect is coming all the way across the image. And then there's, there's one last one. Uh, it's, it's actually called plus. Um, and you, you have to think of this as, um, ground zero you know this this is the the full effect of the lens so a lot of people don't understand what the plus is because you you come to 2.5 and then you you probably think oh well that's it i'm at the lowest aperture but then there's a little plus and it actually it you can move the aperture ring all the way to the plus um that just means that this is now the full effect across the board it's an even effect um, going all the way across so it's not as uh, strong on the edges as it is in the center it just it just goes the complete um, the complete full fr uh, I can't think of the word uh, the full lens all the full way frame. across yeah full yeah. frame yes full frame uh, so you can see here when you go in you can see how glowy it is mm. so that's going to um, that's the full effect that's going to 2.8 that's going to uh, F4 there and then come in and you can see how sharp it goes yeah. as we're going out. So if I'm just gonna go back through it and then the effect comes on and you can tell the glow. And that's kind of why they call it the velvet lens because it's got this velvet glow to it uh, that comes off. Hopefully Great. Well, that, 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 that should, certainly demonstrates the, the effect. Yeah, Very yeah. Well. So hopefully that's uh, made some sense to uh, to people on how to think of the lens. Uh, the other thing to look at. Let's go down to sort of one here. Now you'll notice down the bottom uh, left hand side that it's got my uh, ISO, which is two hundred, and then it's got my uh, shutter speed, which is uh, uh, sixteen hundredth of a second. But then I don't have any f stops. It's all blanked out. Mm. So that is obviously because lens babies are manual lenses. There's no contacts there. So um, uh, your camera doesn't actually know what f-stops you're setting it to because you actually set it on a, a, an aperture ring that's on the lens itself. So my advice to you all is if you're taking a, a picture, when you take a picture, look on your camera and uh, just make a note of the, the image number that's displayed on your camera and then look what your aperture is and then just write the aperture number next to it in a, a little pad. So then when you do get back and you edit that image, uh, you can actually edit the, the EXIF data if you wanted to. If you just went into the, uh, the image information, then you could go to the f-stop and you can manually just type that in. So then when you export the image, it would say um, lens baby and um, you could put the, uh, the F stop in there as well. So that's a, a nice way of doing it for yourself to keep track of what F stops you're using, using it for. If you're using your images for uh, maybe displaying or anything like that and people ask you, it's always, always good to know. So just a little quick tip for you there. Cool. That's a good idea. I, mean, I, I obviously haven't done that. That's why I was guessing at the uh, <laughs> the aperture <laughs> settings that I had used. Then you can see it says uh, lens there and we can change all of this as well. So this is where all your metadata is. So if I pull it down, see the aperture, 
we can actually change um, that. We can put in what aperture it was uh, um, shot with. The other way of doing it is keywording. So we could actually just type in a keyword of, say you just do F4, and then for this image here, you would just um, put a keyword in as F4. And when you export it out, on the metadata on the image, it would just be listed as um, a, a keyword as F4. So another quick way of doing it as well. So I, I love keywording. I have a massive keyword library and I, that's, you know, I list everything by keyword. And even you can see there, that keyword is velvet 56. Uh, so when I do want to find anything, uh, like Angela asked me today for some images, I can just put into my search um, bar on my, say, Mac computer, uh, Velvet um, 56, and it will bring up all the images that's in that search as well. So it's just a really quick way of keeping yourself organized and finding images, especially with Lens Baby, because it doesn't record that. It's a good way to start a, a keyword library and just apply keywords, the, the name of the lens, and the aperture it was uh, shot at as well. Good idea. Uh, a couple of things to note about the, the velvet as well. So this is obviously the box it comes in. Uh, I love their packaging, how they put all the images on the, the uh, boxes. They take a, a little bit of attention to detail. You know, we all like a good box, don't we? We don't throw boxes <laughs> away anymore. We all store them. Um, it, they do make the... Um, the lens for all brands as well. I actually don't think there's not a brand they don't make it for, but no. you can't change it yourself. So say you've gone out and you've bought um, a Sony. I know you are probably just thinking it's only a color on the back and I can see uh, the, the three screws. Can I just order another color and, um, and put that on? And the answer is no, because the color the flanges change as well to, uh, per manufacturer because uh, of the distance from the, the center to the lens as well. So it, it isn't just a case of changing um, the back plate. Uh, it's, it's got to have the right flange distance as well. So uh, no, you can't. So I've been asked that many times before if they can just change the, the back of them. If they change you could flanges. use an adapter, of course. Yeah, yeah, you can, uh, you can get an adapter. Um, and use it that way uh, but to be honest with you I think I'm gonna say it I think they're so reasonable I'd have no problem going out and just buying another one for the new camera that you uh, you buy yeah. and um, the, the price that these are for the images you you, you have um, I, I think yeah they're value for money and plus the build quality you have to take into account that these aren't mass uh, produced um, in you know on some platform that they're, they're all hand built and uh, Angela I, I believe you've been over there and see them assemble them by hand I have yes it's really interesting there's a you know there's a, a, an old kind of style bench a wooden bench and there's a guy with all sorts of I think they do actually have some mechanical screwdrivers it's not all done by hand in that way but yeah the, somebody actually puts them all together you have a batch and you'll kind of do the same thing for maybe a dozen lenses and then you'll go on to the next step and the next step really interesting to watch but yeah someone actually builds it for you yeah and, and so innovative i mean they're coming up with new uh, ideas all the time um you know we'll get we'll get this all set up and we'll get the cameras going but uh, it's like next month uh, we're talking about the the omni and i'm really excited to do the live demo of the omni because we can actually show the light flares and everything all coming in um, so you can see it live live happening and what what they can bring out next just blows my mind um one of my favorite lenses and maybe we can do a it's probably too many to list actually um <laughs> but a favorite lens baby lens so if i if i had to pick one favorite lens baby lens i i like the twist 60 yeah uh, so that's for anyone who doesn't know that's one of the optic swaps there uh the twist 60 goes into uh, a yeah so it goes goes into, pro. goes into one of those and uh, it's basically you can use it as like a little tilt shift uh, lens then with the uh, twist 60 in 
Uh, and I've done engagement shoots with the, the couples and the look you get, especially if you find, I always look for really nice foliage in the background. If you get that lovely swirl to it, um, it gives a beautiful look. So um, right, I'm going to just plug in my camera and turn it on. And then we'll, uh, we'll just do like a, a little live demo just to show people what it's like. So as, uh, as Rob's mentioned, you know, we've got this lens baby does the optic swap system. So you put the lens into kind of like a, a separate barrel. So it comes out like this and then you pop it back in um, and then you can bend it around. Whereas the Velvet 28 is a more kind of traditional style lens. So it looks like the sort of lens you get just get that there we are so it looks more like a more traditional lens um and it certainly feels more like a more traditional lens but actually you know what the build quality as rob says is incredible and it's a manual focus only but it's a really smooth um ring very and you know really quite long extensive focus throw as well so you can be very precise with the focusing all of the lens baby optics have different effects and you can get those either as a sort of standard type lens, a standalone lens, or as part of the optic swap system. So Rob was talking about swirls before with uh, the twist. The, uh, the, the standalone lens equivalent is the Burnside, which is my favourite, Burnside 35. I really like using that. So have you managed to connect up yet, Rob? We're all, we're all good. We're there. Excellent. Yeah. I've covered for you. <laughs> I owe you one. So uh, I'm going to share my screen again and then okay. um, we will we will figure all this out as we go along. Uh, screen share. So at the moment, uh, don't worry about how uh, the look is um, at the moment. So when it comes to manual lenses and especially I'm going to try and make it as generic as I can for every uh, uh, camera. Uh, this is out of focus because I haven't focused the camera yet. So I'll do that in a minute. Okay, just to say, Anila, this will hopefully answer your question or your concern with manual lenses because she says her, her concern about manual lenses is her eyes. So hopefully this will help. Uh, it, without, um, without being too abrupt, if you use it right, you, you could be partially blind and get a... Um, a spot on picture. So I'm not even wearing my glasses and I have to have glasses for driving, reading, editing, everything. Um, and I seem to get a, a sharp picture without even wearing my glasses. So the key to this is, and like I said, I will try and talk generically because I don't want to kind of keep it focused on uh, Sony cameras. Um, so the key to it is two functions on your camera. When you're using a manual lens, you've got to be using peaking, okay? So peaking is, is something, and unfortunately you won't be able to see the peaking come up on the screen because it doesn't translate from the camera through the tether tool and onto the actual uh, screen. So I'll have to explain how it works. So peaking will work on the, the contrast and it, it'll highlight everything that's um, sharp and in focus. So I have my peaking, you can set it in the camera to different colors. I like mine set to yellow, so it's nice and bright. So anything that's in focus will all be outlined in yellow. Um, and if it's not in focus, then you won't see any yellow whatsoever. So as soon as I start pulling the focus, um, I'll see the cactus all start to appear with this like fuzzy yellow coming all over it. And when it's covered in all the fuzzy yellow, then I know that is in focus. But sometimes we might be working a bit further away. Maybe it's a couple and they're standing uh, a couple of meters away. And, and then it's hard, even with peaking, you may see the outline, this yellow fuzzy outline coming all on the couple, but it's hard to sort of judge it if that yellow outline is behind them or in front of them. And by that, I mean, you want the focus to be sort of on the nose and the eyes. If it's on the ear, then the front part of the face is actually gonna be out of focus, but then from the ear past uh, will be sharp and in focus. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the camera settings. Now um, you can go to your manuals and you can find out where it is in your manuals. 
but turn on your peaking and uh, change it to a bright color you can pick normally in in all makes you can either pick red yellow white um, so I, I pick yellow because it stands out a lot um, our second step will be to um, to turn on uh, sort of a, a digital zoom and what this is it's a, it's actually called digital magn magnifier in your camera okay uh, some cameras call it uh, uh, manual assisted um, zoom so is it, or some call it manual assisted some call it uh, manual zoom uh, but what this does is as soon as you turn the uh, the, the ring, the focus ring on a, a manual lens, then it'll automatically crop into the image and you can set it to crop in a lot, uh, a little, however much you want. I think I've got mine set to crop into it uh, four times. Now think of a couple or think of this cactus, it's sitting there and I'm then going to focus on it. I press the crop and it zooms into a portion of that cactus. Because it's zoomed into a portion of it, what that will mean, I'll see if um, the digital crop will actually work through the software so you'll be able to see it. What it'll mean is because I'm zoomed in then to a portion of it, when I go to focus, then that little portion, it's gonna be easier to see uh, the peaking and what's outlined. So if I've got a couple standing there, then, if I press the digital crop, I can literally crop into their face. So then when I do the, uh, the focus, I can see the peak and come over their eye. And as soon as it's over their eye, I've got it set to disengage after a couple of seconds. And then I just take the shot. Um, right, so I'm just gonna try and see if the digital zoom function will work on this. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So I'm going to come back out of it. Okay, so I'm going to just um, set this image up. I'm going to go to probably about five, six uh, for this image. Um, and we will uh, use the, the digital zoom. The only thing that you probably won't see is the peaking come around everything because that, that definitely doesn't translate through to the Sony uh, software. Um, just answer this last one is digital crop different to focus magnifier no it's it's the same thing so focus magnifier is digital crop so uh, like I say it is named differently on each camera brand it'd be brilliant if they just unify like all brands and call everything the same in all the menus I'm not, I'm not sure it is actually Rob because some cameras you can crop the image okay oh, uh, you? when you're shooting so say if you've got a full frame camera you yeah. can set a digital crop so it shoots 35 mil. Sorry, it's an APS-C format. Yeah, so I think that's... actually it, it, we're talking about something different. Okay, because in uh, on the Sony camera, that's called Super 35. Yeah. So that isn't digital crop on the Sony cameras. It, that's called uh, uh, Super 35, where if I turn on Super 35, then it, it, it crops into the full frame um, uh, sensor and it shoots it as an APS-C um, instead. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, my apologies. It obviously does change from uh, camera to camera. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's just do a picture of this. Very simple setup. I haven't gone all to town. There's just um, a couple of lights lighting this. I wasn't going to do anything fancy. Um, the main thing to get across from this is you need to set your camera up properly to be able to use lens baby lenses. Don't think you just stick it on the front and you can just take a picture. It doesn't work like that. One of the most beautiful things about all the range of lens baby lenses, uh, and the one, I mean, we said this in the beginning, is it's about slowing down. And I know myself when, when I wanna get away, when I wanna um, do something different, I, I normally take the, the dog out, we go to the meadows, I just throw on one of the lens baby lenses, and I kind of just find somewhere to sit down and I just then slow down and it just empties your mind out where instead of worrying about all the settings and worrying about what's going on, you can just really slow down, take your time and you can just get that uh, shot. And I think there's a bit of 
satisfaction from it when you get back and you put it on the computer and you're like, oh, do you know what? That, that's a beautiful image. You, you've not been into Lightroom. You've not been into Photoshop. You've not spent hours on uh, applying all these different things. You've done it in camera, you know, and that's it. You're, you're there. You can just enjoy the image. So I think that's, that's the satisfying thing about um, lens, baby lenses. It's, it's getting there. So let's uh, show you how this happens. Uh, you probably won't be able to see me on the camera, um, but I'll still keep talking to you uh, as I'm doing it. So I'm going to come down to here. Okay, so we've got the cactus in, uh, in front of us here. Um, one of the first things we need to do, we need to figure out what we want to shoot out you know what is the look that we're after so the look we've got here is way too strong so let's just take it down uh we'll go to f4 so f4 is quite nice we can see all the the grays and blacks are, are all um all properly there and then we've got the actual frame that we want you know it's in the center um but now we need to focus on it uh I can see looking at the back of my screen like the, the yellow is coming sort of highlighted around it. I may, I may even see if I can pull my camera off and just show you uh, the back of the screen once I've set it all up. So we'll see if we can do that so I can show you how peaking works. But I look, look through the viewfinder and then I zoom into a portion of it. Now that's when I'm going to Rob, do you always focus when you've at the aperture you're going to shoot at, or do you sometimes close down a bit? No, so I I kind of like to I start how I set up an image is I think of the area I'm in and I think right, okay, um, it's in a controlled environment. I, I'll shoot at ISO 200, so I'll get a really clean image. And then once I figured out my ISO, whether it's outside or inside. Uh, my next thing is the aperture that I want to shoot at. And in this case, it's the effect. So I think then I, I want the effect to come into play here. Um, I, but I also want to see some detail in the, in the cactus. So that's where I'll go for an F4 uh, because I know that's going to give a, a nice effect, but we're going to see some detail in the, in the cactus. Then from there, you've got to think about your shutter speed because it's a manual camera. Now I am working in manual. I don't work in aperture priority when I'm um, shooting with lens baby lenses. I just like to be in control of everything. So then I'm left with my, um, uh, my shutter speed. So my shutter speed is the only thing that's going to go up and down because that's going to give me my correct exposure. Uh, and I'm looking at the exposure and the histogram on the back of the camera to make sure that I can get the white's white and the black's black. Once I've kind of done that, you don't need to focus on anything to get the exposure. So the camera's meter doesn't need to uh, have the image in focus for you to get all the exposure right. So once I've set all that up, that's when I'm going to um, uh, uh, sort of think about the focus. Uh, and the first thing I'll do is I'm going to focus it with my eye. So I think that it's spot on. And then when I think it's spot on, that's when I'll press uh, my magnifier. So I'll literally hit the magnifier and I'll just zoom into it uh, and just check it to make sure that, so we can zoom into it here. And then uh, if I want to make any quick adjustments, I can make some quick adjustments from there as well. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'll just take the shot. I'll come over to um, we should have the viewer so that's it um, you should see a picture now uh, Angela is that yeah you yep. seen that the picture. so now we see the cactus itself and if I uh, zoom in we can see we're uh, all nice and sharp there we've got and don't forget, this is a raw image as well. So um, you can see here, you've got some purple fringings coming on. That's because the background is, um, it's a vinyl background. It's a vinyl 18 
18% grey background. Uh, and this is, you can see just down the bottom here, uh, AWR, so it's a raw image. So there's nothing done to this. This is just straight out of camera, um, nothing at all done to it. So you're just looking at the raw preview. Um, and we can go in, we can check how sharp it is. We can uh, change the effect of it. So let's just uh, change the effect. We'll stop it down um, and then we'll increase the effect. And then I will see, I think I may be able to reach this camera that you're all looking at my uh, beautiful face. Uh, it should be able to stretch over and I'll be able to show you what peaking looks like on the back of the camera. Uh, I think it'll be important for people to see who don't know um, about it. And then you'll realize how easy it is to set up. So let's just change the effect. Now, the thing to imagine as well, say if I go to, say 2.8, that actually changes my exposure as well. But we will just see what we can do here. And I'm gonna zoom in and check. So the image has beaten you to it. The image has beaten me to it. <laughs> it's on the screen before you go back to your chair. <laughs> so this is what I was saying about the effect now. So a lot of people look at that and they go, oh, you know, that's out of focus, it's blurry. So don't forget, I've just, I've just put the strongest uh, effect. Well, I've gone to 2.8, which is a really strong effect on this lens. But if we was to zoom in, you can actually tell there, you know, how sharp, you can see all the details in it. Uh, now, what you would do is if you edit this lens, then you would do a little bit of contrast. So let's go back to the other, so you can see. Um, obviously it was, and you can see the difference there. Now, because I am in manual, if you watch from that to that, that's a lot brighter. Uh, I just changed my aperture. Um, and left it to be a bright um, image. But what I should have done really is I should have brought my um, shutter speed because I left my shutter speed the same. So if I was to go back to this one and keep the same image, not change anything. I'm just going to check focus. Take the shot. We'll go over to this one. So all I've done is um, brought my shutter down so you can see it's just uh, cut some more light out. Um, and that's just building the preview. But we can go in and it's all still nice and sharp. Right, hopefully that has made sense to people. But what I'm gonna try and do now, let me just close this down. And I'm gonna um, stop sharing my screen so everyone can see me. Let's move some things out of the way so I don't knock anything over. We'll change this back to um, F4. And we'll bring this out as well so people can just see the peaking. We'll bring that back down to there. Now, if I pull out a cable and I disappear, you know why. <laughs> so it's been great talking to everyone. So I'm sure we can make this work. Yeah. Good shot of your ear. Yes, there we go. Let me put this so I can see what we're filming. And I'm just going to come into there. Right. You can see that quite clearly around the, uh, the plant pot. Yeah, so you can see it's all sort of hazing away. If I just go into this and if I move the lens, see how I'm focusing? Okay, hold on. That's perfect. Yeah, can you see that coming in? 
Yes. So that is peaking. So that's peaking. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of foolproof because once you've got um, what you think is set up on your focusing, then do the, the sort of the digital zoom. Uh, it pulls you into the image to a part of the image, and then you can just fine tune your, um, uh, your focus on that section. Peaking helps so much. It makes it so much easier. Let me just zoom me back out a little bit. To the point where, once you've got your peaking going, once you get the hang of, uh, so I've assigned the zoom to a function button on the back. Um, once you've got the hang of just manually sort of focusing in to get virtually where you think it is, press the digital zoom, it crops into the image, and then you can just fine tune it to where you want, let go, take the picture, you're done. You'll find that you get used to it, you start, excuse me, you start speeding up and speeding up, and before you know it, you're actually using a manual lens like it's an autofocus lens because that's what the peaking is kind of doing. The, the peaking, think of that as your autofocus side of things. That's helping you out and that's telling you what is in focus. Um, now, I, I can think of many moons ago uh, before I even knew about peaking where um, I used to use manual lenses, uh, shoot images, and when I got home, I looked at it what to me looked like in focus on you know that tiny little screen on the back when you get home you look at it on the big screen you're like oh right yeah that's out of focus oh, that would have been a brilliant image oh we'll turn it black and white and we'll call it art so <laughs> so, so yeah peaking is definitely uh, the way to do it if, if i had my own way in every lens baby box there'd be a little piece of paper saying turn peaking on and use uh, digital zoom yeah. um, because it would just get you to the, the the image that you want so much faster and help you out so i think it's important to remember that even if if you use manual focus lenses um or certainly some of them on your camera already and you'll find when you rotate the um when you rotate the focus ring the image may enlarge, but that means that lens has got mechanical contacts, that, oh, sorry, electronic contacts. So there are no contacts on the lens baby lenses. So it can't do that automatic yeah. um, magnification. That's why you have to press that button. So don't sort of think, oh, but it works with my other lenses, so it's fine. You've, you've got to sort of set up that process. Yeah, and we, we, we talked about this, um, I think uh, this morning about, it would be good if lens baby could just add those contacts in. So just to talk to the camera to tell it what the F number would be. And, um, you know, like you say, turn that digital zoom on, but the cost of them to do that would just far outweigh the cost of them making the lenses. And yeah. um, a, a lens, when it's, when it's a manual lens, you've got to appreciate and think about that brand, that manufacturer, they're putting all the money into the research and the glass. So you, you're getting the, the best optics that you can possibly buy for that, that money. If you was to go out and buy uh, an equivalent lens, say an, an auto lens, the, a 28 millimeter you know, autofocus lens, and it was the same price, well, then I can guarantee that the optics in that autofocus lens are not nearly as good as the lens baby because they've had to put a lot of their development into the motors, the electronics, um, and so forth. So that's the other thing that you have to think about. Yeah, you've got to slow down, but you are getting better optics. Um, you're going to, yeah, there's nothing to go wrong with it. I mean, it's a manual lens, so uh, there's nothing to really fail with that lens it's kind of um, bomb proof when it yeah. comes so. so just before we finish Rob there are a couple more questions I use these with flash all the time I mean I've used it uh, in the evening when it's been the bride and groom's first dance and I've used um, a lens baby lens for that I've used the twist uh, 60 to get that swirl effect uh, with my flash on top as well and that gives an awesome effect especially uh, when your shutter speed you drag your shutter and you get the lines coming in um, as well. So hopefully um, that's uh, answered that question. Uh, uh, Cheryl's answer, asking a question. As the twist is available for the composer, why is it not recommended as compatible with Olympus? 
Uh, it's because, right, that's because Olympus is a micro four thirds. And because the sensor is so small, you lose uh, the effect because the effect is on the outside of the Twist 60 the optic. Um, yeah. And because it's cropped in the sensor, then uh, you basically lose the effect on the out, outer edge. So to think of a full frame camera, then uh, you're seeing that full effect, effect across the uh, whole frame. But then if you crop into that full frame, then the effect still stays on the edges, but you've cropped in, so then the effect disappears. So that's why uh, they recommend not to use the Twist 60 on, um, it's basically micro four third cameras. Uh Cheryl says, uh, if you use a lens converter to attach a lens baby to your camera, does it affect the aperture? And she's added a little note. Basically, she's got uh, Olympus Fit lens baby, so micro four thirds, and she's thinking of buying a Sony to get full frame effect. Yeah. So my thinking is that, no, it won't affect the aperture, but it does depend what which lens baby you've got, because if you've got one of the, the trio, which is specifically designed for the smaller format, then it's not the aperture it'll affect, but you'll get the, be the smaller frame. As long as it's one of the standard lens yeah. baby lenses, not one that's only made for micro four thirds, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. I think you should be okay to get an adapter and just put it on a, yeah. on a full frame camera. And Anilla's just saying that uh, she's found the information about peaking very useful. Cool, yeah. Um, Good. I, I would say- Helpful. Yeah, I would say to everyone, you know, have a go of it, even if, if you're not on a mirrorless camera, if you're on a DSLR with a prism that's uh, on the top, then uh, you'll have to turn your camera into a live view. You'll use the back of the screen. Um, you know, don't worry, even professionals use the back of the screen. So uh, there's no, no hardship over that. And then turn the peaking on and you'll be amazed on how precise you can get it. And even on the back of the screen, you can use the, uh, the digital zoom function. So you'll probably be able to see it even better. Instead of looking through your eye cup, because you're looking on the screen and using the digital zoom, you imagine if you're doing like a, a bee on a, on a flower. Well, if you can use the digital zoom to zoom into that bee and then just quickly put the peaking on and, uh, you know, nail in your focus, then you can take the shot and you know you've got that perfect image straight away. So uh, definitely worth using. Okay, Trish has just said uh, focus peaking. Of course, it's uh, most Canon DSLRs do not have it. Even if you don't have the peaking, the the enlargement really does help as well because you know if you can zoom into a small part of the image and then just nail your focus, you're probably just going to have to slow down that little bit more to um, to get your focus nailed in. So thanks for everyone for coming over. Uh, and putting up with us uh, going through. We managed to cover quite a lot with tethering the camera, um, showing the effect, uh, and also the pictures that we uh, we both took previously, showing how the effect can vary from, like you did um, in the churches and um, in the fields, to even if you're still on furlough and you're home and you want something to do, well, you can uh, get your plants together and you can practice doing your focus peaking as well in your garden with the lens doing that way. Great. All right. Well, thanks everybody. It's been uh, great chatting with you. Brilliant. Cheers everyone. Cheers. See Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.